Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So for 10.5, I wanted to make some updates to my previous ball list. If you guys haven't seen the video, it's uh, there's a thumbnail that says answer everything or something to that effect. Now, this is going to be like the upgraded 2.0 version. It has some differences in there and primarily the Teshem Mutinous Sword got a rework and this card plays very nicely in the deck so damage an enemy unit by five repeat once for each status it has so if we have a lot of just straggler statuses we can go and set this card up quite nicely generally we're going to be getting 10 damage but we can get up to like 15 plus damage per the use of this if it has a defender if there's a siri nova like whatever the case may be we're getting through it so that combined with a lot of poison removal, lots of locks, and just a bunch of really fun stuff, this deck's actually quite strong. Now, I want to go through it with more detail so you guys know exactly what you're getting into when you play it. It plays a little bit differently than the previous version because with this one here, you don't want to take Yan Calviat too early because the previous version had... Um, Anna Henrietta up in the nine provision range and then my modified one at the end of season had Schillard. This one doesn't have a lot of top end aristocrats so you're relying on playing a couple from hands right the dames were at it and you might have to play these to proc the ball so be careful because look Vincent and Philip are your only gold aristocrats besides obviously calviot that can proc ball so hold on to calviot if you can just in case we you know need him right and with our thinning package being the blight makers and mage assassins did i click okay no with uh, the thinning package that we have there the pseudo thin from ring of favor if we don't use it um generally we're going to be pulling calviot we've got four tactics which I'm very comfortable with. That's going to move this up in addition to the thins that we're taking. So uh, I don't run into any situations in round three where we don't have ball in hand. And I think that there's only once where we didn't have aristocrats in hand. I had one out of two and I knew what I was getting into. Basically, I pushed the game to the point where I was willing to go one aristocrat down if it meant, you know, getting out some of their key components in round two. So again, as long as you're mindful of that, you'll be just fine with the deck. Now, to go through the deck here, Masquerade Ball, it's a scenario that just got a buff. So it used to be 15 provision being the most expensive card in the game. Now it's 14 provision. So this one progresses whenever you play an Aristocrat on your side of the battlefield. So not a disloyal one. It's got to be one on our side of the playing field. And the prologue is going to be spawning a Thirsty Dame. So when we play this card, this card comes out. And whenever we give an enemy unit status boost self by one so we can do multiple procs on the same turn but we're at least getting one per turn which adds up to being quite a good engine right and then chapter one and two when we play an aristocrat get a fangs of the empire these are just agents that basically give an enemy unit poison right so we're getting good value off of those and it's going to help with good removal there. So the aristocrats I chose to proc that are more thirsty dames because we have so many statuses going around that it felt necessary to keep some more engines in here. These will often see removal, but if they stick, they just get nasty. Also, they give zeal to cards like Philip, which has its own sort of set of synergy right we can give something doomed right away we can give something lock right away which could be very important with a deck like this so that's why i opted to go for it there right now next up i got brathens this card is assimilate deploy create and play a bronze disloyal unit from our starting deck so what we have here the previous version had the um duchess informant and the emissary this one just has the emissary because i needed to make another slot for a tactic so it was a little strategic we're not playing too heavy into assimilate anyways and this does create a proc at the same time as giving a tactic for calviot so it felt very smooth but we'll get to that now the main thing for brathens is just a point swing it's to give status on their side of the playing field because we if we have the dames out there and we put spying like, that's a status we're putting on their side of the board, right? 
So that's kind of a synergy there with that, but also just productivity, right? You know, being able to go and boost a lamp or being able to go and boost whatever we need to boost to keep it going makes a lot of difference. And I think that's how we're gonna be playing it most of the time, right? And because I swapped out the informant, I wanted to put remedy because either we take away from one of their best plays, let's say we're playing against relics, so we take away their griffin or something of really good use in their bronze end, right? Um, that can make a difference. But if we don't have a good target, we at least have our emissary, either the one we played from hand or the one we played from Brathens. So we can go and do it again, right? Proc assimilate, play it again, get some extra boost there and gets a like a, a spying on their side of the board, so it's gonna give us a point. So that's kind of the idea with that. This is pretty simple, sorts our deck from highest to lowest provisions when we play it on deploy. So you can kind of set up future rounds, you know exactly what you're gonna be pulling into, so you can decide whether or not you go for a push or you go for a pass. That's basically it. The Vincent Van Morleham's great because we get to destroy an enemy unit with status, and we have no shortage of ways to give status, whether it be locked, doomed, poison, whatever the case bleeding potentially even with uh, the hunters we got answers with this here it's one of the cards that you just have to have in a deck like this now another one here is yennefer's invocation this is something that you could put um it's also something that you could take out and i say this because there's also room for really good cards like morale right like we don't necessarily need like it's just the easiest removal but because we have so much removal and it's just a big working engine like I, i'm not against having something like the morale go in the deck as well in this slot here it synergizes with a lot of the other stuff we got going on so you could go and do that right but the second i go and do that then someone's gonna say oh you shouldn't do that but I'll make two versions of the deck. I'll put them both in description because I'm down for whatever. Um, so that's that. Cadaverin's really good because we get to poison an enemy unit, then spawn a base copy of it. So we're giving status, we're spawning a unit, and it's feeding into other um, poison kills that we have set up, right? Ring of Favor just helps us keep tempo with the opponents, starts in our hand. Uh, this got a bit of a nerf, right? They call it a double nerf, but it's really not that bad. Um, the boost allied unit by three used to be four. The provisions used to be eight, now it's nine. The card's still playable, you just change one more thing in the deck and that's basically it, right? Philip is definitely a staple here. If we control vampire gain zeal order, give doom to an enemy unit. If it already has a status, lock it. If it has more than one status, poison it. So we can just use this as like a poison engine and just start funneling out their cards, poisoning everything in sight. Um, talked about the sword, really good removal tool. We've got the cup bearer. We can either use it as a poison or a purify, works both ways. We've got Vanamar off the leader's a kill or Vanamar off locking with the Philip is a kill. It just makes a lot of sense here. Thin, we talked about pretty much everything else here. A couple locks, proc in the scenario. Uh, Diplos are basically just there to help with the tactics. You could swap Diplos for Tourney Joust if you like, but I feel like these have a higher point ceiling because um, we can roll into like Scoytail stuff, we can roll into Skellige stuff, we can roll into like, you know, some pretty good cards if we're playing against Nilfgaard, the rolls are pretty good. Monsters, not so much. Syndicate, not so much, but most of the matchups that we're going to be facing we have pretty good pulls with Diplo, so that's why I like it there. It also procs assimilate on the one and the two. So that's kind of the idea, right? But um, that's it. I got five games for you guys with commentary today. And um, yeah, I wouldn't really change anything about the deck. Like I say, I say maybe Yen from Rawl. Again, I don't know how I feel about that because I do know when you play Morale, they're probably going to remove it, right? So it's one of those things where maybe you get the one poison, maybe it's worth it. But Yen, Yen's going to play better, I think, into the Death Wish matchup because they're just going to be consuming all the stuff and it's going to get really tall and you just take a Yen on it. So I'd probably just keep it the way it is. We'll put it in the consideration bank. But yeah, guys five games for you guys today with live commentary and i'll be back as soon as possible actually once i come up with another deck guide um we'll aim for tomorrow just so i have some time to think about what i'm going to be doing 
but uh, I got a big list of ideas and I just got to knock them down one by one. So expect a lot of uploads for the next few days. And if you guys enjoy the content that you see, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I want to hit 10k subs before the end of May. It's ambitious, but I know we can make it happen. So let's get it and uh, let's get into the games. All right, so we got Nilfgaard and Slave coming up next here. It's probably going to be six, right? Let's see. Okay, five. We know that they're probably running Amnesty because of the buff. Just tuck back both of these. We got, yeah, pretty good round. You know, it's probably a lock. It's just that lock's kind of slow. Luckily, all the stuff that we play is deploy, so I don't really care if they go and use collar. We're going to save the Teshim sword for something better. Actually, that's huge. I could roll a joust. I can roll another lock. There. Tempo's us too, so we're tied. That's fine. They're trading down on these. And then we can just cram this. We've got them in a good spot too, because now I can go and use something like Vanimar off one of these if I just want to play it, right? We don't have to go and take leader and potentially waste. I don't want them to roll another one of these because we want to be able to just answer whatever they have. You know, the Teshem is really good on... It's really good on uh, the Helga, right? But so is this. I think what I'm supposed to do is take this here. Because I still have 10 points, 5 and 5 off this, and then this for Helga, so please don't get it. That's not a big deal. I'm kind of glad they actually helped me a little bit with this whole thing. That's fine. We go take the draw. We pull into something a bit better. Sure. Hopefully we have time to get Calviat. Maybe we can bleed round two. Try and get some big commitments out of the way. We didn't spend really a lot here, right? We spent Vanimar. We got Cantarella. 
in exchange. It's a pretty good trade. Play bronze from theirs is going to be something like that. Actually, that's a really good pull with this. Um, yeah, for that reason, we'll put some stuff back. So we can just trade... I guess we could just trade bronzes, right? Nine cards left to pull. I don't get Calvia, which surprises me, but... Isn't that just a lock? It could be, because we have the one. There's two here, three here. I just want to make sure that I actually have enough aristocrats. Um, if they have a defender, this takes care of the defender as well. It's probably a lock. It just gives them better value if they go and they take something like this. Like they can leader that real quick. It's kind of something that's nice to Vincent though. Maybe we start thinking about the next round. The top three cards move one to the top. Yeah. They played Kanta, so I don't really care too much. What's nice is that this play is feeding into this for the removal, right? So I don't even really care. I can let it climb just a little bit more. It's just getting to a point where... Well... Actually... We could go card up... Nah, I think we need to take... Hopefully it just hits this. Okay, so it'll be Vincent off that, and then this off that. Plan changes a little bit. It's kind of slow. Or we just leave it. <laughs> yeah, thankfully they just... They just go and take. Um, Enslave 5 tells me maybe ball. We've got a lot of good cards left. I think I let them be with it. Timer's not too big here. So this is what they're going to summon. Okay. For six. For 12 points. There's a removal. We've got the Aristos. Brathens. Okay. 25% chance. Let's go. Behold, new gods, iron might. Hmm. 
Yeah, we'll throw it on ball. We'll take Vincent off that, and then we'll take out whatever's behind it. I think they have Stefan if they're playing on range rokes, they're playing tactics. Team for Menno, for Ku. <laughs> you know what's good about this though is that we actually have really good setup. Okay, for Damien, there's no chance. There's no chance. They gotta play that on melee, and then we just leader it. They see it, right? Let's go, six points per turn. Okay, so we gotta get rid of this. And then we gotta take care of this okay I was gonna leader that actually just in case all right so we got stockpile coming up here next two locks might be a bit too much that's good to see. We don't have the poison, but we can make it. Honestly, I don't think Diplo is going to really do much for uh, for our play, so we'll go ahead and just take that instead. Blightmaker's much better. So, if we do try and take Philip, then we can go and we can give this, um, we can basically give this, uh, Doomed. And then we can start doing Poison. So, Zeal, Doomed, next turn, Poison, Poison, right? I think we want to get this out of here quicker. That's a whoops. <laughs> That's a whoops. Um, if it already is status lock it, yeah, yeah, yeah. whoops. Either way, the commitments we're getting because of it is uh, it's pretty funny. So we'll just pretend like it didn't happen and see, you know? Here. If we win from this mistake, I'm feeling pretty good today. There we go, we'll poison that out, and we'll poison that out.
Are they really going to take three just to do it? No, okay. So we'll take that. I think it's supposed to be this here. Actually, hold up. We've got three with status. We can make it four. That's kind of a big deal. And then we need seven points. Put eight. If they have boiling, that sucks, but... I will be alright. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. 42-34. We just take this. So it's probably time to take Ring of Favor. Yeah. Three, six, nine. Can't say I really want to boost anything, right? I'll give something else status. And lock that before they can reset it kind of thing. Actually, you know what? It's probably... Three turns, so we don't bother clicking this one anymore. Um, it's going to be give status to the Henselt, and then take Vincent. Keep in mind, top deck is putting ball at the top, right? So we got ball, we've got cadaverin, lots of stuff. They're taking the charges without the leader, like without the tokens. I wonder if they have Sabrina. The way they're jamming the roll. So we'll take the poison.
think that's worth it. Here's the thing, though. If I go into this, this, and this here, we don't have the aristocrats in hand. We'll go one, two, and three at that point, too. It's gotta be, it's gotta be pass on them. I wasn't expecting this problem to happen with the aristocrats, but obviously in a, around like the first, just really pushing, it's kind of bad. But we got out a lot of commitments early, I think. A lot of things we gave doomed, but Henselt was out of the way, Pride out of the way, full leader, a lot of stuff like that. Um, here's the thing. We can pull into Dame quite well. Okay. So this goes because we use leader. And then that goes. So we've got Dame for one proc. But I think that they might take Heat Wave. Because nothing's telling me it's not... Uh, it's not non-devotion, right? So... Yeah. Even with single proc, it should just be pretty good. Five ten. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Yeah, it's not even bad. Like, look, we play this, they heat wave this, that's fine. If they play this and they don't get heat wave, we play this, we proc it once with the fang, and we can have a little bit more versatility as to what we kill. So, siege it is. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. We'll just play that. Because if they slow and take a heat wave, then it it's kind of good for us. Rafford's here. That's got to be a yen. Yeah, the sooner I get rid of this, the better. It's gonna be... It's gonna be Cadaverin. Five, six, seven, four, five, six. Um, actually, we take that here, and we take Cadaverin on that uncontested, so that we can actually use the order. It's going to be what amphibious. Oh, okay. Three points. I think we're good. 
right? Minus the one, yeah. Okay, good. Even without the second proc. And next up here we got... What do they call it? <laughs> Mahakam Forge. Dwarves. Um, I actually don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. I think we'll be okay. We've got a lot of answers to what they are doing, right? Tons of poison. We've got, you know... Look, this... Imagine Resilience and this, we just chew right through it with Teshim. So, yeah. Calviate round one. I think we start nice and slow with this play, right? Now, if we're looking at Aristocrats, we don't really want to sort top deck just yet. It's a little bit different than normally playing because we've got the one, two, three, a lot of the bronze end ones, right? This kind of helps me. We'll do 10 damage if we take it now. The Veil's kind of annoying, though. I think we take this before it gets worse. Because, like... There we go. So I can just chip it down next turn if I want to, right? We just single turn it. Um, which might actually be kind of worth it. Yeah, it might actually be worth it. That's huge. <laughs> That's kind of crazy if you think about it. 10 damage of removal for 7. And the ceiling is higher. This just has resilience. So we can just make it. I'm trying to decide if I want to go and take, uh... What's the plan here? We'll just take it out. Yeah, I think we can maybe just Bruver, like, leader their Bruver. But is it's not actually that good of a leader. We'll see. One, two, three. Um, from grave. I mean, this is not a bad thing to play, but uh, I don't think we need it in this case. That's a bit better. They could have heat wave. We're technically a card up here. One aristocrat and a two, right? I think we could dump it and see how it goes. Makes it harder for them to play cards, right? And if we need turns, we could just go and take like Bravins and stuff like that. Their leader plays into our stuff. That's a cool card to play, though. Mm, let's see. Wait, 
Waiting for some more commitment stuff here. Do a melee. It's kind of a big deal, but there's going to be stuff that's worse. Honestly, this is a pretty good card to just take. Because it plays for quite a bit, right? Yeah. We gotta bleed all this trash out in round uh, two. Here, so I think that's gonna be something for me here. We'll keep leader. I'm just hoping that a shorter round three is like the way to go about it. So we could play. Yeah, we could play Cupbearer. Maybe. I just... Here's the thing. Obviously, if they play Gabor, it's kind of bad. What are they going to kill? That? Okay. I think I'm supposed to just take my poison here. And then if they do some kind of hero pass thing, then we just... We basically remove this. We gotta see something good. I think that they use leader here because they want to try and yeah, exactly. Avoid playing some important stuff. Fifty to thirty-five. I feel like I'm not supposed to play anymore. It's expensive. Like, we could go and take Gezra's, but we're getting a bad turn off of them, right? Like, this just seems better. Control of Vampire gets Zeal. We've got, like, a lot of good stuff. Pony goes first, yeah. Actually, we want that. Definitely. We want that. I think we want to... Yeah. Yeah, because it's our lock, right? And then we'll play this without Zeal. Let them get some units out there. And then we'll, we'll work around with it. Yeah, this is good. Here. This is good, good, good. Um, damage two by three.
This looks like Bruver's on the way, doesn't it? I think I'm supposed to still just kill these. Because it makes Bruver less attractive. Let me get the engine value off of it too, which... Yeah. Okay. I was going to kill that, but we're definitely just killing that. And they get one point off that, plus there's nothing else for me here. Okay. So they gotta get they gotta get nine points. I wish we hit the middle. Yeah, we're good. There we go. Alright, so we got movement coming up next. It's gonna move the mic over a little bit. Guys, I, um, one second here. Lock, kill. Take that. This won't stay. We'll put it back for later. Blightmaker's good. Poison's pretty good. I think it's supposed to be that. Anyways, um... I ordered groceries because, like, you know, new season. Gotta grind it, right? And, uh, they didn't have the coffee that I was asking for in stock. And, um, I had substitutions turned on. And then they thought that it would be okay to swap it out with decaf. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. We got Saskia first. We're struggling, you know? But uh, it'll be alright. See, I think the hunter's supposed to go on either the Catwitcher or the Sentry. Yeah. We'll just try and get out of the round. I think that's the plan, right? If this is anything like the one I just published, then uh, honestly, it's really strong. They get the two, the one. We got to play one more card. I don't mind five. Honestly, it's that or take the thin. Yeah. We'll pull into more Aristos if we do it this way. 34. 13. We should get a turn out of this. They'll play. They'll get the two here. Yeah. Rebukes. Coucher. Three. Okay. This comes back. It does one damage. Yeah. We just got the pass. Honestly, you can't win round one against Saskia. It's just... <laughs> Unless you're doing the same thing or you just got like 10 locks. See, we're lucky we dodged that. We top deck right into ball two, which is great. Now, I'm pretty sure that my version runs Heat Wave. I don't want to find out. I'm gonna pull it pull up my list. Um, let's see here. Poison, poison. Where's our throw? 
We've got one Aristo, two, three. I think it's a pretty good hand. Okay, my final version. So they have Vile instead. So anything's on the table. There's card differences. Um, mine is Karathi and Muzzle. So you gotta be careful. Maybe we just have to assume that they have it, right? Yeah. Why don't I just play it? Because then when they give something Vitality, at least if they don't use Leader here. Okay. It's probably just Philip then, right? I don't know if it's going to be Gezra's. I don't know if it's going to be like no unit at this point. It's really hard to say. This is kind of slow. Mm. Don't we just... It's locked, right? If anything, I just take the Venomar. There. I think it's important to defend card here. If I do take Simlas, which we have room for, I can roll double Diplo next round, which is actually kind of a big deal. But we also got to get rid of this, don't we? They boost it. Yeah, that's actually just better. There's a Vincent, right? Two statuses, poison, poison. I was going to say take Yen, but there's really nothing else. That's... Maybe even a better yen. Actually, you know... It's not... We just lock it. Now it's a yen. Poison that. Actually... We kind of want to save it for Gord if it's possible, right? Maybe I just actually poison it. It's basically just like mine, but they have um, Vile instead of something. I'm not sure what they would have subbed. It's got the Ales as well. Let me just take uh, Cupbearer. It's either Cupbearer or Cadaver, and I think Cadaver is probably safer. Just because if they go unitless in round three. There we go. We just have uh, We just have what we need for the gourd. We've got the full poison still too. That's gonna be huge. Um how many leader charges? I wish you could see this between rounds. This gets some value, more like a six.
Yeah. I'm just gonna... Yeah. They got two liters. It's still fine. Like, they'll kill this with the two liters, and then it's just... That's what it is, right? Protector. I feel like that could probably win them the game. It just, it's a little expensive to... What if I, uh... Nah, they'll kill mine. So there's eight. That's gonna be our poison. Let's take this first. Stig is going to go for a Witcher, right? Yeah. That way theirs goes back, it doesn't do anything unless they take the movement on it this turn. Which they might. Yeah. That's fine. There's not a lot we can do about it though. So Gord's going to be negative points. And then we got a big swing here with this. Um, it might actually just be enough. I don't know with leader and everything, but... They pretty much played most of their deck. If we get a good snipe, we should be decent. Okay. Gord gets taken. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Oh, they missed it. Had I known, um, we just take the biggest card, don't we? So even if they had Gord, we would have taken away the Gord. And next up here we got Overwhelming Hunger Monsters. And we're going to see a lot of that for the first couple days. I think we have... A good amount of things to deal with this problem, right? Put that back because we've got the Calviate. We gotta take care of the bricks. And... If I flip, it gives me 50-50 on the... Well... Gives me. No, it's still Maruna. It's still Maruna. They take it. Duh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that they wouldn't. I don't know. It would be kind of expensive if they just crammed down, took leader. Like, I'd be willing to lose the round for that. Doesn't even play around mana core. Really, it doesn't do anything here. Um, except it does this. This is kind of like <laughs> the play, right?
Okay, so if I can here, if I can poison, if actually let's do it. If I can poison this, I can lock it. Right? So that way they can't just consume it and start chewing up my line. And we'll start playing another row. There's really no reason why we don't. And that's fine. We didn't even have the follow-up. I think I'm supposed to boost something inexpensive. Like, if I boost this, maybe they have Heat Wave and it's a better one. Kind of a big deal here, right? Let's see. We got out of the rounds. We eliminated this player, made it less attractive. We've got, like, a lot of our good stuff here. Um, let's see. The only thing I'm worried about are poisons and then them just eating things, you know? Here. I think this goes because monsters have some pretty bad bronze cards. Got one and two for ball. I think we can afford to play Calviat. And then that'll make sure we top that can cadaver in. Ivanimar and Tesham. Potentially Blightmaker, though. Let's just see what we get. Manicore Leader. I think we're supposed to take the next Blightmaker too, just so that we can um, thin out a little bit more. Okay. I don't have a dirty mind. That's like fine, I guess. That carryover is gone. Yeah. Requires like a little bit of a faster play. Okay, do we care about Maruna? Can we get anything else? That's what I want to know here. Because I can just lock it, right? Here. I'm going to pass just because I have the one brick. And they just threw down the gold for no reason. I think that's fine. They get the carry over three. Sure. We spent one gold at 8p. They spent one gold at 9p. They have one carry over here and one from the succubus. We can lock the second one. Okay, so lastly, we're going to get actual experimental remedy. It could be huge. Um, we could top deck into that if we put back one thing.
I don't know if it's worth it. This could be like a really important lock. I think we just let it be like this. What does front lines that old classic Gwent got a couple scenarios going on like I miss the days where people used to play this way It's kind of nice how it's just coming back That's kind of a big deal I would think That it would be worth it We've got one poison removal Vanamar lock leader I think It's supposed to be the purify And I want to take this. Oh, wow. One and two. Okay. The big swing. Like, it's just a crazy move. We'll let them go taller. I'm going to play this before it gets worse for me. I'd like to be able to lock the Foglet, right? They do quite a bit of damage if they consume it. It's possible that they just do here, but... We'll see. So they leave it? They leave it. Because they're going to play... Okay, that's what they're doing. That's fine. Yeah. Here. We gotta get them to go tall now. Now they're gonna eat the 13 in order to make it work, and then... Yeah. Okay. Just in case, right? This looks just like my version with, <laughs> yeah, it's card for card. Um, 19 points. We don't want them to get the bonded. Okay, so if I poison this, they have to consume it instead of one of these, and then we take Vincent. Also, if I make a copy of theirs, Not 
done if you can stay. Hmm. Can we get over eighteen? I gotta test this theory here. If I consume this, will it spawn a dead laugh? I doubt it. Since the row is full, though, if they take leader off this, they lose points. You see? That's not how it works. This card is taunting me. I suppose we just, here, we dump that, and we take that, and then we just get 10, and we should just be good at 10, a buy is huge, but it doesn't do anything as the last say, I think this should have been earlier, I'm just going to show them what we've got. We won't know because the row is full, but I don't think it would spawn it. 